Coming up tonight, one year in, the f and has its say on the Davis administration's first year in governance. Strong words indeed. A man lost his life on Washington Street. The details from the police are straight ahead. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. William Shakespeare is still having his way. Stay tuned for Shakespeare in Paradise. It's back. This is our News Weekend Edition. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Megan Shepard. This month marked one year since the Progressive Liberal Party became the government of the Bahamas. And just recently, while appearing on our current affairs show, On the Record, the chairman of the opposition free national movement, Dr. Dwayne Sands, is sharing his thoughts on the government's progress thus far. These last 12 months have been singularly uninspiring, underwhelming, Lackluster. The new day is certainly not a better day. They have overpromised and they have underdelivered. A recent poll revealing that 64% of respondents approved of the government's first year. However, the party chairman says this administration has yet to tackle any tough challenges. But if you pick every single low hanging fruit that there is, and if you govern with a wet finger, so I hold up my finger, I see which way the wind is blowing, and yep. then I direct policy that way. I'm able to make a lot of people happy. But this is about governance, and uh, it's time for this administration to get to work. Start to deal with some of the real problems facing real Bahamians every day. One of those challenges, crime. You have crime at an all-time high. We have uh, a record-setting pace of homicides, no holistic plan to deal with it. We have inflation, cost of living, that's impacting ordinary citizens every day. And this administration seems paralyzed, unconcerned, unwilling to intervene to help. So yeah, go ahead and pick the low hanging fruit. It'll be popular until you're faced with a real problem and they simply haven't been tested. Another hot button issue, the Davis administration's travel. Dr. Sand says while he understands that foreign policy agenda further advances the interests of the Bahamas, domestic issues must not be neglected. The Honorable Prime Minister is a distracted Prime Minister. He is spending time traveling around the world, more focused on his foreign policy agenda, even as he neglects, even as his cabinet neglects, the serious problems that Bahamians say they're concerned about. But his administration has said that he is in demand, that the world wants to Who hear from him. elected you? Did the world elect you? A man is dead following a police-involved shooting yesterday. According to reports, the man was fatally shot by police after he produced a firearm and engaged officers. This incident unfolding shortly after 3 p.m. when officers responded to calls of an armed robbery in the Robinson Road area. Police press liaison officer Chief Superintendent Chris Lynn Skipping says as officers grew closer to Miami Street, they observed a vehicle fitting the description that was allegedly involved in the incident with two male occupants. Officers attempted to stop the vehicle. However, the, the vehicle sped off. One of the males in the vehicle exited the vehicle. He engaged police officers and he was fatally wounded. Now, while on scene, she says officers recovered from the deceased a firearm, a quantity of ammunition, and a substantial amount of cash believed to be taken during the armed robbery. At this time, I would wish to speak to those persons who seem to want to engage in lawless behavior in our country. The police will re remain firm, we will, re we will be resolute, and we will continue to preserve this country for the good citizens of it. Those persons who seek to engage in criminal activity, those who seek to engage the police, the police will protect the good citizens and the police officers will protect themselves as they too have families that they have to go home to. Investigations into this matter are being led by His Majesty Coroner.
King's counsel Muriel DeSeal representing Long Island Member of Parliament Adrian Gibson in his corruption trial has objected to Justice Cheryl Grant Bethel being assigned to the case. Instead, Justice Bernard Turner, whose intention was to assign Bethel Grant, has taken on the case himself for trial. The Long Island MP is one step closer to standing trial on accusations of corruption while serving as the executive chairman of the Water and Sewerage Corporation. Gibson, a sitting free national movement MP, is accused of conspiring with others to financially benefit from contracts awarded by the corporation between 2018 and 2021. DeSeal didn't give any reasons for his objection to the assignment, but simply said, I would prefer another court. As a result, Justice Turner will hear arguments in chambers on Monday, September 26. A man who allegedly raped a woman who was drunk and high after a night of partying shared tears of joy Friday after a jury acquitted him following a trial before Justice Gregory Hilton. 55-year-old UL Major was accused of raping the woman on February 14, 2019. Major denied the rape charge but told police that they had consensual sex. After two hours of deliberation, the jury of seven women and two men found Major not guilty by a decision of six to three. Despite the acquittal, Major remains in custody for a pending rape case. Myra Russell represented Major, Raquel Wims and Janessa Murray prosecuted. Discussion surrounding a new draft legislation that, if passed, will now outlaw marital rape. Earlier this month, a symposium for sexual offenses legislation saw the participation of politicians, faith leaders, and other stakeholders who met to discuss legislative changes that could lead to the criminalization of marital rape. Since that meeting, Social Services Minister Obi Wilshkam says debate continues. We're in a democracy. In a democracy, you will have those who support those who don't. Uh, we put out uh, proposed legislation uh, to have feedback, deliberately so to have feedback, and then we'll make a decision as we move on. But at the present time, the debate continues. Wilshkam also expressing satisfaction with the outcome from those who participated in the symposium. They spoke openly, they stated their positions, uh, made it very clear. So and that's what democracy is all about and that's what uh, we're trying to do. We're trying to forge ahead with the intellectual discussions in our country to ensure that we could have discussions, not to have the negativity that's thrown in your face all the time. But let's have a discussion, let's have the pro, let's have the con. Let's hear people talk, let's then arrive at a conclusion. And if the Bahamian people don't want, they don't want, but at least let's find out where they are. And some very sad news coming into our newsroom. World-class composer, writer, and voice coach, Maestro Lee Callender has died at the age of 64. Callender, the grandson of composer of our national anthem, the late Timothy Gibson, was the husband of Bahamian opera singer Joanne DeVoe Callender, niece of world-renowned pianist George God Bless Moxie. A musical family indeed, Callender was a mere six years old when his grandfather started giving him piano lessons. He had a deep appreciation for every aspect of music, but was a firm believer that the singing voice is the most expressive of all the instruments. Our news sends sincerest condolences to his wife, Joanne, and his entire family. May his soul rest in peace, and may the holy angels greet him well with song. And still to come on our news, the Life for Key Foundation is pitching in in a big way. Some 58 students benefiting from the foundation's generosity. The last surviving Bahamian World War II veteran in New Providence got a nice surprise recently when the British High Commissioner stopped by. That's coming up when the weekend edition returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Aero. Aero is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Aero. So why is you streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Arrow with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, 
learn and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Aero from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash Aero or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. Shortly before the House of Assembly closed for summer break, Minister of Social Services, Obi Wolschkum, noted that there would be an increase in social assistance programs. Wolschkum says the increase began last month and is going well. It's 10% across the board for all assistance, whether it's food, whether it's shelter, whether it's health, whether it's a burial. Uh, we're providing assistance across the board. It's going well, but more is still needed. No matter how much you do, there's more uh, that we must find, and we must reach out always, and that is why partnerships are important. Partnerships, not the talk, not the promises, but the delivery. 58 students have gotten much-needed assistance for the 2022-2023 academic school year from the Life for Key Foundation Scholarship Program. The executive director telling us they received a record number of applications for STEM programs. Executive Director of the Lyford Key Foundations, Nicola Virgil Roll, says many of the students are first generation college students. They can, uh, you know, see and dream about going to college and then have the financial resources to pay for that. So over the years, we talked to many of our students who are so grateful and want to give back. Um, the parents as well know that a heavy financial burden has been lifted. Our scholarships on average range about $15,000 and we do have some as high as $30,000. Virgil Roll says they also have a program called FOCUS, which is an eight-year enrichment program for students in public schools. And we support um, on any year 250 young people uh, who stay with us for eight years and they receive 45 days of extra uh, academic support and emotional uh, uh, social support as well uh, to help them become the first in their families to go to college. 13 students are from New Providence, 11 from Grand Bahama and one is from Abaco. The effects of Hurricane Dorian and the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted the lives of many students, a factor when it comes to selecting their future areas of study and career paths. They looked at areas of around environment um, and, uh, you know, uh, all of the things to do with really um, marine life, uh, preserving the environment, and they wanted to give back in that way, so they chose areas to study that were in those areas. The executive director is also extending her appreciation to donors. Virgil Roll says they truly stepped up for the community post-Hurricane Dorian and then the pandemic. We were able to assist with food relief. Um, during the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, just before that of course was Hurricane Dorian and so again our donors really um, came through and supported and said how can we help. The application process reopens in February 2023. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. FTX Digital donating 100 laptops to the Ministry of Education. The laptops will be given to teachers across the country. The donation comes following a pledge one year ago by FTX to donate some 300 laptops to help develop the country's education system. Communications Director of FTX Digital Markets, Valdez K. Russell says, it's their hope that the educators who receive them will take a full advantage of elevating their classes and engagement with the young men and women who will lead our country in significant ways. We recognize that without the tools and resources to equip individuals to succeed, they will struggle. The Minister of Education, Glennis Hannah Martin, and Education Director, Marcellus Taylor, thanking FTX for the donation. And it sounds cliched, but it's not particularly in the field of education, which is the enterprise that guarantees for us, as best as possible, a prosperous, peaceful nation. I know that FTX is headquartered in the Bahamas, and I am very grateful that they have understood the importance of sharing in the village in the development of the nation as a whole. Thanks to uh, FTX for being a responsible corporate citizen, for identifying a gap that we have.
when our news comes back from the break, the Falcons Boys Club is flying high in Grand Bahama. The details are straight ahead on how the police are helping out. And the stroke of death is as a lover's pinch, which hurts and is desired. Woo, that's hot. Almost as hot as Shakespeare in Paradise. We have the details when the weekend edition returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Aero. Aero is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Aero. So why is you streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Arrow with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Arrow from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash arrow or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. Welcome back. The young men of the Falcons Boys Club experiencing an exciting day yesterday on Grand Bahama as a number of professionals in the aviation industry spent the day sharing words of advice. Over at the Champ Center, Assistant Superintendent of Police, Nicola Sayers, telling the group that the Royal Bahamas Police Force has a special department called the Air Wing. In this section is where we have our pilots or we have our aircraft mechanic. So in order for you to work in this section, you have to be a pilot or an aircraft uh, mechanic. Mm -hmm. All officers are not pilots, so that's why we call them specialists. That is a specialist area, and then they would get something extra for having that specialist attached to being just an officer. Duty manager at Bahamas Air, Harold Williams, noting that the aviation industry provides a wide array of career opportunities, including accounting, dispatch, customer service, and more. Engineering is just not about being a mechanic, all right? Being an engineer, you have so many parts on an airplane that needs to be repaired, that needs to be maintained, and that needs attention, all right? You may have some persons who um, you know, very good with uh, information technology, okay, or, you know, fixing um, radios. And so the airplane have all of those equipment on it. And so engineering are uh, part of those areas. Director of Operations at Progressive Aviation Group, Adrian Jones, enlightened the group on the business of charter brokering, concierge services, and jet management. It was a pleasure to just come back and talk to the kids and just let them know more about the industry and go beyond um, piloting and maintenance, you know. So they were able to gain a little bit more information into charter brokering, jet management, they were able to get a lot more information that they otherwise would not be able to get because aviation is a very uh, small field and there isn't a lot of representation in it. So being that we're representing on an international scale, it's a pleasure to come back home and uh, provide this information. Air Traffic Controller C. Alvin Smith adding that the industry is one of new and exciting challenges. In air traffic control, it's never the same every day. It's always changing, it's always different. And I've been doing it for 30 something years now and I can prove that every single day as an air traffic controller, it's different. What we do is every time a plane comes in to land or these gentlemen talking about taking off, if they're in an airport like Grand Bahama, they have to be in contact with an air traffic controller. So we have to work in partnership with the pilots and the pilots have to work in partnership with us. The group then boarded an aircraft for more up close and personal lessons on the aviation industry. 
Now the Falcons Boys Club and Champs Mission also hosting a mission maritime seminar on board the Margaritaville at sea ship on Grand Bahama. The organization that focuses on mentoring young men had several leaders within the maritime industry speaking to the group about the maritime profession. Founder of the club, Darren Roll, sharing the purpose of the maritime seminar. The purpose of this is for me to step aside and ask all of these persons here, is there anybody who is involved in shipping that would take the opportunity to publicly want to have boys in a program? The Champs Community Center is there for you free. There's no cost. We are developing phase number two. It's a after school vocational institute where companies can come and use the facility free of charge, train a young boy uh, in that particular field. And the reason why we're going from grade nine because we are making it almost like an apprenticeship program. The last surviving Bahamian World War II veteran in New Providence received a special visit from the British High Commissioner last week in order to sign Queen Elizabeth II's Book of Condolences. We were able to sit down with them both to talk about what the moment meant for them. Let's look in on Marlena Leonard's report. My name is Vernon Maxwell Pinder. Age 96. I'll be 97 the 5th of next month. I've joined the RAF in 1943 and I was demobilized in September of 1944, 45. We first heard of Air Crewman Vernon Pinder during an exclusive interview with the new British High Commissioner to the Bahamas, Thomas Hartley, when he shared a memorable moment from the day before. We got a call from the, from the Royal British Legion who look after veterans. And they of course they would they'd love to come out and sign on the behalf of veterans. And there are three veterans left from, they're still surviving in, in the Bahamas from, uh, from World War II, one of whom still lives in New Providence. And so the Book of Condolences at the British High Commission was closed and brought to the 96-year-old's home. It was incredibly humbling to sit and talk to, to, to Mr Pinder and to hear his stories from the 1940s when he was serving alongside a, a Canadian, British, South African air crew based here who were training. And with a smile, he had such pride to talk about the, the, that public service. Thanks to the Royal British Legion, Bahamas Branch, and Air Crewman Pinder's family, we were able to sit down and chat with him this week. The dapper nonagenarian proudly wore his medals and newly acquired British and Bahamian friendship pin. I appreciate this very much because just recently I had this kind of meeting with anybody from anywhere, you know. Pinder remembers when the veterans' monthly meetings could fill buildings and lawns, but now he is one of only three remaining Bahamian World War II veterans in the country. They just fade away. Each one fell away. When we came back, it must be out over a thousand men. It's amazing to see all of them gone, and I'm the last one that I saw. When asked what Hartley's visit meant to him, here's what he said. I cannot explain that. It, it's so, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I was so shocked and surprised to know that I had been remembered all these years. So, I was much, much surprised, and I appreciate that so much. Both men seemed deeply affected by the visit, with Hartley promising Air Crewman Pinder's condolence note would get some special attention. The whole book of condolence will go back to the palace for them, for them to see, but I'm particularly going to put a post-it note on that page to make sure that they have a chance to read um, uh, uh, Air, Air, Aircraftman, Air Crewman uh, Pinder's um, note. I think that was really special. Reporting for our news, I'm Marlena Leonard. To be or not to be, that is the question. We are at the height of hurricane season. Stay woke, the weather report is on its way. And all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exit and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. Stay tuned for our Marlena Leonard and Shakespeare in Paradise. That's coming up when the weekend edition returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Where you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Aero. Aero is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. 
improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Arrow. So why is you streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Arrow with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Arrow from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash arrow or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. The tropics are stirring up something out there. We are in the peak of hurricane season, so let's keep an eye out for weather systems. In the meantime, let's take a look at the forecast over the next few days. For the first time since 2019, Shakespeare in Paradise is back at full capacity and ready to welcome audiences in its new season. Our Marlena Leonard caught up with actors for more on this year's shows and their journey to the stage. Here's her report. Jeremy Johnson started in the Shakespeare in Paradise 2019 cohort, but says he has always wanted to act. In this year's short tales, he stars in two of the plays. One is about a young man that goes to school against his father's wishes and disobeys his father. And the other one is a grieving gangster that is trying to gather his gang together to become one. It's nine authentic Bohemian plays all in one night. Gabriel Decius has done theater work in the past, but is particularly excited to have been cast in this festival, Short Tales. I've been trying to do this for three years, but every time I tried to get in, there was always something stopping me. An avid advocate for supporting the arts, Decius highlights the multi-talented cast he's working alongside this year. Most of the actors here aren't just actors. They're also artists that draw. They're dancers. I think one of them is an acrobat. You, these guys are amazing. These aren't your everyday, typical actors. They're all very well-rounded. Salem plays the grandmother in Stephen Hanna's All Our Monsters Witches, and although she's new to acting and this is her first Shakespeare in Paradise, she says the dream has been with her since she was a child. I thought it wasn't a feasible thing to do, but now I started, I started last year with a, a theater class, and yeah, I've been on the scene ever since then. Dominic Stubbs plays two roles and, like Salem, has dreamt of acting since childhood. This is my, um, my first time in a Shakespeare in Paradise production. I always watch it on TV, Cable 12, and I always wanted to be a part. It wasn't stereotypically masculine to do so, and it, it sort of dwindled down my confidence and my love for it. But it wasn't until I met a wonderful teacher, hello Mr. Waterhouse, uh, that put me back on to acting, that my love for it really got reinvigorated. Tide plays three roles in this year's Short Tales, but got off to a bit of a rocky start. I got involved with Ring Play Productions because I showed up one day at an audition, and uh, I, I sucked at that, at that audition for real. The next day I showed up, I gave my all, and uh, I'm here now. So yeah, don't give in to your fears, and be prepared to give hard work. As for audiences, Jeremy Johnson wants you to know there's truly something for everyone in this year's festival. It entitles so much more than just Shakespeare. We do have the traditional Shakespeare with King Richard III this year, but we also have a musical for the, the singers in First Comes Morning, and then we have those bohemian plays in Short Tales. So with the Short Tales plays, you, you can hear our dialect, you can hear our conversation, so those are relatable, as well as integrated with the traditional King Richard and then the musical First Comes Morning. Shakespeare in Paradise runs from September 19th to October 8th. For showtimes and tickets, you can visit their Eventbrite page or website. Reporting for our news, I'm Marlena Leonard. Thank you, Marlena, and thank you so much for joining us for our News Weekend Edition. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shabrick. Continue to enjoy the rest of your weekend.